Hey friends, in this video I'm talking through my QA process between design and development. The aim of this process is to ensure the development work being carried out by the engineers matches as close as possible to the designs. I've included a free Figma template to help you out with this. Be sure to head in the link in the description below to grab it. I'd also like to add this process is always evolving and this is the optimal process i found that works with my team but each team has unique needs so feel free to take inspiration from my process if you're new here my name is Rakan, a product designer working in london be sure to subscribe for future videos and let's get started a great way to understand the QA process is to imagine a QA process like a sieve. You want to be capturing as many of the design misalignments as you can, especially the big discrepancies. The earlier you review progress with engineering, the better, as this can save you a lot of time and trouble in the longer term. Having a good relationship with your engineering team is key for this. You don't want to be at the point where one week before release to production, your developers are showing you the new features for the first time. Radio silence doesn't benefit anyone. Someone needs to take ownership. Can that person be you? You want to be refining the amount of discrepancies as much as you can before release. Ways of doing this is by having regular developer demos with your engineering team, which is a great way to get feedback on the development work as things progress. Every other week or every week, the whole team can get together to see the development progress and ask questions. Another way is by communicating through Slack and through emails to understand progress. Also by having direct access to staging and QA environments so you can go on and see the design progress yourself. So jumping straight into Figma, we've now taken our screenshots, we've looked at the QA app, whether that's a production app, and we've noticed our discrepancies. So we want to report these back to our team, and I've made you a free Figma template to help you out here. So head into the link in the description below to grab it. And the way this template works is, is following this polka dot alignment system, where on the left you have the design alignments and discrepancies that need to be solved and then you have the numbers of, that align up with the screens. You also have the design here of what the app should look like and what's currently screenshot in production slash QA. So it's important to spend that groundwork going in through the production app or the QA app to find the alignments and this design deck helps you present them back to your team. And the reason I use a presentation deck is because it helps the product managers, product owners, and people from various teams to access the file and helps them make their Jira tickets, their rally tickets. It saves them time going into Figma and they can share it around very easily. And it's a nice way just to present it back to your teams. So we can see here the padding at the top should be 48 pixels. On the design here is 48 pixels. We can see on the production app it's not. And similarly, we can see with the font here, it should be light on the subheading, but we can see it's bold here. And then same with border radiuses, they're inconsistent. And the color here, number four, it says that the color in this font should be white, but it's not on the production app. And then you'll basically duplicate this slide as many times as you need, depending on how many discrepancies you got. As I mentioned earlier, the earlier you do this, the better, because you're not gonna be having like 20, 30 slides of discrepancies. Hopefully you only need to create like a few slides every few weeks to get this going. And it's always an ongoing process. And it's great to just reference this um, deck all the time and have this central place. And at the top here, I always put the screen name so people know what they're talking about. And I also re reference the actual Figma screen name as well. Similarly, um, I've basically created the blank template here for you to insert your screens here. And then you have your little polka dots, which you just move around. So it's very simple. Just add your screenshots and into the placeholders into the iPhones and start adding the polka dots. Another reason why I think it's good to have these iPhones is because it shows what needs to be displayed at the screen at a given time. So sometimes you have these really long screens. So we can see here there's these cards and there's a reason why they cut off here because it gives the affordance to the user that they can scroll down. And it's very easy for like maybe developers to miss something like this. So putting the iPhone placeholders help with this as well. And lastly, the another thing we do here is just some laptop screenshots. So if you're making any web designs, we've got you covered here. 
follow the exact same process where you add the polka dots to the screens and then correspond and give some detail of what needs to be explained here, what the discrepancy is. So the details should be summarize the discrepancy very easily so that anyone can pick up what's going on and it should only be a sentence or two. So when you're presenting back, you can explain in more detail. And then the lastly, we've got a thank you slide here. So I like to create this document all the time and, and it evolves. So I use the same document, Karen, adding more slides and removing slides that have been covered. And another way you can do this is through Figma as well. Like I mentioned, you want to present back your findings. This deck's great for that, but then you want to make sometimes give some detailed feedback inside Figma. So earlier we was on the Twitter app and we're creating this fake replica of like a new version of Twitter. And we want to show the developers what misalignments there are. So we can see there's a blue font here. The color here should be blue. And then the font weight here needs to be medium. And then the same here, like the icons here should be black. So it makes it easy for maybe developers. I want to dive straight into Figma and see the misalignments there as well. So you're covering all bases. And we can see here, maybe that the line here is there's a bit of a misalignment. So the way it works is I just grab the tag here and then you can basically add it where corresponding to the design here, the new Twitter app. And that should say that the um, lion height should be like two pixels and it uses auto layout here. So it makes it a lot easier. And another thing we do here is on the right, we just give a simple explanation of what's happening. Like the copy has now changed for bookmarks to your bookmarks. So there's another misalignment here. So all we have to do is grab grab the tags here and then say the copies changed and we will go through the entire screen and make sure that things are looking good. So that's another way you can do it inside Figma, but I do recommend the presentation style because I feel like this polka dot system works really well for a handoff and creating Jira tickets or rally tickets to action user stories to get developers to work on these in the future because at the end of the day, developers have a backlog of work to do and you want to schedule this time in to make sure that they work on it. So a great way to communicate is through these slides and I feel like it's been working great on my team. So this is a design misalignment document. I'm just going to talk through next some other ways of solving design discrepancies and misalignments for the longer term. When it comes to design alignment and you've got limited time or resource, I recommend looking at the 80-20 principle. I personally feel like as your app grows up in scales, there'll naturally always be little discrepancies here and there. So the 80-20 principle can help here. 80% of your users will be using the same 20% of features of your app. For example, on Apple Music, 80% of users may be using the same functions every day, such as a listen now function and the library. Making sure those core 20% of screens and functions that are always being used are looking top notch is going to be key for delivering a great user experience. This can be a challenge in itself, but it's a solid place to start when you have limited time or resource. Find out through analytics what other core screens that are always being used. Look at those screens first and start from there when it comes to design alignment. An amazing long-term solution for design alignment can be design tokens for your design system and for developers. This helps with color, font alignment, space and alignment. However, it does require some upfront work. A simple explanation of what design tokens are is that your developers are referencing a central JSON file where the style names are referenced the same as on Figma, Sketch and across iOS, Android, Web. You're all using the same variable names. So for example, you've got a button in Figma and it's black and the color for this will be button dash primary dash black and it will be the same on Android, Web, iOS, they'll all be using the same name. There's no need for hundreds of hex codes. You're all using the same references, the same design tokens. Instead of saying 16 pixel spacings, you're saying spacing medium now. At one point, one of the apps I was working on, we had 30 different shades of black and white. 
design tokens help a lot with this. You're not having hundreds of hex codes, you're now just referencing all the same design token names. If your team is following design tokens, naturally discrepancies are gonna drop, drop a lot. So a significant drop will increase efficiency for everyone in your team, it will increase efficiency for designers, developers, and product managers. This is my last tip for design alignment. I hope you find it useful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to comment down below your QA process. I'd love to hear what QA processes you've been using in your teams. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And be sure to subscribe for future design related videos and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.